All right, well, welcome uh, yet again. I think we have a few folks here that weren't here last night. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Alison. I'm the CEO of Foresight, uh, which is a nonprofit organization to advance specifically undervalued science and technology. And we focus on frontier biotechnology, neurotechnology, nanotechnology, AI, and space. And so we have relatively similar programs across all of these different verticals. You're obviously in the nanotechnology category here right now. Um, but we have these like three different approaches for how to advance uh, these technologies. One is we like fund uh, grants, fellowships, prizes, um, you name it. Uh, the second one is that we do a lot of field building. So you're in the field building kind of like part of this, which is workshops. We have these festivals at the end of the year where we bring together all tracks. We have these virtual seminars and so forth. And then we also map like paths for progress um, uh, that kind of like is our North Star for like where we want to go with these technologies. And so, you know, if you're interested in any of this, please do talk to me, but um, it's been like a, quite a long journey. We were founded in 1986. And since then, you know, like there's, there's been really wonderful projects coming out of this community. If you're ever interested in any of the case studies, please do let me know. There's a few really wonderful ones. Obviously, I think the one that is most been known to people here is that uh, Fraser Stoddard, who won our Feynman Prize in 2007, then later on uh, went uh, to be co-awarded the Nobel Prize for some of the work that was building up on the earlier work for the Feynman Prize. So I think we're like relatively good at spotting talent early. <laughs> the Feynman Prizes uh, had just closed for this year, but they're going to be open again for the next year's nomination in case you want to nominate a colleague. Um, but yeah, there's like a, a bunch of case studies out there across different tracks. Um, if you're interested, please do talk to me. But uh, we're here kind of partly in the nanotechnology track to discuss some of the questions that uh, Eric laid out yesterday in terms of his vision of like, why don't we have nanotechnology that can restore the climate, heal humans, create material abundance, and help settle space. Um, and I think part of that is really that we don't really have the institutional landscape um, or like a, a good scientific supportive ecosystem uh, that can like build these technologies well. Um, I think we tried in the past, um, and you know, Eric mentioned the NNI yesterday, and it's been proven quite difficult <laughs> to get the institutional buy-in. And so we, we, we really want to change this. And so at Foresight, we have these like different ways of how we're trying to go about this. One is we have the seminar series, and Lydia, I think, already mentioned it. If you're interested, for example, in presenting your work in a longer time block, these seminars are about an hour long. Um, they're virtual. Many people are already in that group. Many people have presented their work. Not everyone here, though. And so if you want like a longer kind of like time to present your work to like a kind of like selected set of seminar members, but then also to be published on YouTube to our wider community, do please let us know. We're going to keep all talks very short today, seven minutes, three minutes Q&A. But if you ever want a longer time to really like present your work to, the, uh, to this group and to the wider, to the wider Foresight audience, please do let us know. Second one is we have the fellowship. We have a few fellows from this year here, uh, and even like a few of our fellow alums. That's really exciting. You're Ning, you're up here. So this is a mix between fellow alums and a few of our current fellows. So thanks a lot uh, to our fellows that come here. It's our seventh year in the fellowship now, and there's different tracks, again, across different technologies, and then they also mix. Um, and so the fellowship has been my favorite part, I think, of Foresight, or like the most, the one that makes me most excited about the future, because it's awesome what you guys are building. And then finally, you're here in a workshop. So this is the nanotechnology workshop series that we have. And so we've had various different types of nanotechnology events, conferences, summits, uh, since 1989. I'm hoping I'm not saying anything wrong, Eric. You would know this best, but I think it's 1989. The last workshop or summit that I found was uh, almost that early. So. Uh, there were quite a few of them over the years, uh, and this one, for example, is one from 2003 here, where people work together uh, to kind of like, well, the workshops are mostly focused on like trying to bring people across different subfields in molecular machines, molecular and nanotechnology together, to discuss the things that you can't otherwise discuss either in a commercial setting or in an academic setting. Um, and so we're really trying to create this third space where we open up a little bit the opportunity space to think more long-term. What are the long-term goals in the field that you guys want to be working towards? Um, and so at the last one that we had last year, where a few of you, who was here last year? The last year's workshop? Okay, a few of you. Well, uh, Ted uh, co-authored this fantastic report. Um, if you're interested, the topic was really try to design a few architectures for molecular uh, 3D printers. Um, and we had a molecular breadboard, <laughs> molecular Legos, uh, and there's a lot more out here if you're interested in like actually diving deep into some of the structures discussed. Uh, there's a lot here in uh, the workshop report. I'm not going to bore you with that now. Uh, that is from the last workshop, but I think it ties in well with why we're having this workshop um, today, which is that you know there's always amazing ideas that come out of these workshops, but it's actually quite difficult without 
like, you know, a driving force uh, to afterwards get people incentivized to continue that work. Um, and especially to like scale that work up into some of the product ideas that are often generated at these workshops. And so I think part of the fact is that just, you, you know, you guys are working in somewhat interdisciplinary fields. There's protein engineering, DNA, nanotech, um, yeah, AFM, STM, there's molecular modeling and design. There's like various different subfields that have to come together for these long-term visions of nanotechnology to work, or at least like some of them could be building blocks for that. And it's difficult to kind of coordinate that um, and get it into some kind of like a, uh, a common shared vision uh, for the field. And so that's why we were very happy um, to reconnect with Jeremy over the last year because he's trying to do just that. And so uh, this kind of like workshop um, throughout the next few days, we'll be trying to work a bit more on like what would a common vision for that field look like where all of you guys' work is kind of represented as different building blocks of this longer term vision. Um, and Jer Jeremy will tell you a little bit more about what that means in a second. I'm mostly here now to tell you about how we're going to do this and what this workshop is going to look like. So um, you have a bunch of links here that we already shared with you and that I've been sharing on WhatsApp and so forth. They're also all on the whiteboard here. So the Wi-Fi password is also uh, on, the white, uh, on the whiteboard here. It's 50 years is the, um, is the channel. And then the password is just Google it <laughs> to make it extra confusing. Um, but we have a few links that are quite relevant for you guys. So the event page is just the public page. So if you ever want to place like a face to a name, that's where we have all the faces that we could get. Some of you are very elusive on the internet. <laughs> um, we have the introductions doc that I wanted to highlight to you. So um, we just had a round of introductions earlier, but many of you have already filled in this document. And it's a chance for you to introduce yourself a little bit more to the rest of the group in terms of what you need, what you can provide. And these documents um, are really useful. Like sometimes I see people online in them years after the workshop <laughs> and they're still editing their bio. So they're like really, <laughs> so take this, uh, take this, uh, this is as useful as you make it, right? If we have more and more um, introductions at, out here, you can really be more targeted in the types of people that you want to meet during the social hours. So uh, introduce yourself and please don't share this introduction doc with anyone who's not at the workshop. Okay, good. Uh, second uh, link that I want to highlight to you is the program. And so this is, should not be news to anyone here, but this is a collaborative program. It's a draft that is updated. We have already done uh, the kind of day zero of the event yesterday, um, but this will walk you through a little bit what we're doing today um, and tomorrow. And I will do that briefly. So my opening remarks are almost over. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, next one up, we're going to have Jeremy here to discuss a little bit more the kind of workshop meet um, of, uh, of the next few days. Uh, so he will introduce you a bit to the roadmap that they've been working on. Uh, we'll have a discussion about it. And then it's gonna be group work. And so group work is basically, you're gonna be stationed across different stations in this, <laughs> uh, in this maze uh, to tackle different questions about the roadmap uh, that, he's that he is presenting in the first uh, keynote. So do pay attention. <laughs> You'll have to engage with it after. Uh, and that's the first session. We're gonna have lunch. And then we're going to start talk, uh, we're going to start like a few very rapid fire round talks. Again, these talks are seven minutes long, three minutes Q&A. Um, the first one is on the category of uh, design and simulation. So these are all the categories that are following now. They're all categories that are relevant for the roadmap. Obviously, they're not exhaustive, but these are at least like big components of the roadmap. And so we're going to have talks on design and simulation first. So which better design and simulation tools do we need to build for the field to progress? And then we're going to have a workshop on this where each of you gets to contribute a bit in terms of like, okay, what design and simulation tools would you actually like to have? Uh, if this field goes well, like, you know, where, where are current bottlenecks? What would you rather, what, 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 would, we, what would you want to do better in terms of design and simulation? Then we're going to have talks on atomically precise construction and assembly. And we again have a workshop where all of you get to engage uh, with that um, topic and like get to make requests and like, uh, request for specific capabilities that you want in the next few years uh, from that field that are relevant for the roadmap. Um, and then we're going to vote on a few of these, like short select them, and you have a bit more time to actually like um, engage with them a bit more meaningfully and deeply. Um, that's day one, and then we're going to have dinner and drinks here, and that usually escalates outward. <laughs> so uh, you're welcome to stay. Um, uh, and, and this is like a pretty long social time if, 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 if you want to make it such. And then we're going to do the same again uh, tomorrow, this time tomorrow focusing on actuation and control. 
and focusing on measurement and verification um, before we're then going to have uh, a broader session that is kind of like finalizing uh, the day, which is more on like, okay, if these are like possible different categories of a roadmap, what are we missing? Uh, what are the meta challenges? Like why would a roadmap like this not work? Um, you know, who needs to be uh, bind in for something like that to actually have a meaningful impact on the field, et cetera. This will become more clear after Jeremy has done his presentation. Uh, and then we have after show drinks. And I do want to say that after today's main presentations or main day, during the dinner and drink session, often what happens is that people have ideas for further breakouts. And so we have a whiteboard where you can uh, fill something in. And so if you want to present on something, if you want to onboard people to something, if you want to demo a tool or whatever it might be, uh, just put your name either here on the program doc or find me, uh, or there will be a section here on the whiteboard where you can fill it in. But think about, is there anything that you want to share with the rest of the workshop that isn't on the program yet, okay? There's plenty of time to do that. <laughs> We're ending at five, so people should still be alert. Okay, well, that's all for me, almost. There is the WhatsApp chat uh, for any questions. Most of you are already in there, which is great. Um, and that's for you guys to also share projects, resources, research that you've done that's relevant for the workshop. So feel free to like share any conferences that you're hosting, <laughs> any research that you publish that is relevant for this. Those um, kind of like WhatsApp chats also usually exist for like years afterwards and people use them quite liberally to like share and coordinate on shared interests. Um, okay. But last but not least, a few words on goals. So there are like three goals, I guess. The lowest hanging fruit is you walk out of here <laughs> after the next two days um, and you have garnered a new idea, an inspiration for your work. That's great. We should all be able to do that. Uh, the medium one is like actually have made new connections for future research collaborations. And oftentimes, you know, like years later when we check in, they've actually flourished uh, and that's fantastic. It sometimes takes a bit more than a year. Uh, and then the highest hanging fruit is really incubate a roadmap for these functional nano machines that would help advance the entire field. So help us help you <laughs> further on to like communicate your guys' vision in a more, um, uh, yeah, in a more kind of like shared, uh, shared format. And then how um, we have the introduction stock, that's for you all to facilitate networking. For the rest of the day, let's focus really on the topics at hand here. Uh, I know that you all uh, wear certain different hats, but let's try to kind of like think of ourselves as a team pulling on the kind of like same strang or on the same, trying to work towards the same goals. Think about how you can help others and think outside the box. So apart from the talks, um, the event is Chatham House Rule. As everyone knows what Chatham House Rule is. You can speak about ideas, but not attribute them to a specific person at the workshop um, without their explicit consent. So you can share ideas after the workshop uh, broadly with others, but don't attribute them to anyone specifically at the event and unless they've given you the explicit consent. And that's to allow you to experiment with ideas. So you can be a bit speculative here, but please stay within the bounds of science <laughs> and the laws of physics. <laughs> um, we're not going to invent time travel this weekend, but, um, but, but it's, it's to give you a little bit more space for creativity, okay? Uh, and then there is potential follow on support for those of you who are interested in actually contributing uh, something afterwards. And so please take this as seriously as you want it. Um, and please try to think about what might your contributions look like. Um, okay, cool. Well, that's all for me.